Hi, I'm Strength and Conditioning Specialist Mike Mejia, and welcome to another installment of Ask the Dryline Coach, and our final installment of our series on fixing the flaws. Now in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend parts 4 and 5 of our assessment protocol together because there are a lot of the same issues in play. And I'm talking about things that you might have found that went wrong when you did the unilateral cone touch drill or the unilateral hip bridge. And if, in case you're not familiar, you can find all of those assessments right here on the Ask the Dryline Coach Archives page. So let's take a look at the kind of drills that you're going to need to do right now to help correct any imbalances that those tests may have uncovered. Right, our first drill is going to target the medial glutes, the outside of the hip. And what this is going to do is going to help with better knee tracking. So if you had a, a problem with the knee pinching inward on the cone touch, this is definitely a drill you're going to want to do. And this is called the band clamshell. As you can see, we've got a mini band attached around Nicole's knees. And now placing her top hand on top of the outside of her right hip, to make sure it doesn't go anywhere and keeping the feet together she's simply going to try to take the right knee up away from the left hold the top position for a second or two and then back down great job let's see if we can get that up a little higher Nicole we're keeping that right hip at home keeping that right foot on top of the left and simply trying to separate the knees And what this is going to do is really like I said strengthen those medial glutes and this is the mini band clamshell and you're going to want to make sure to do extra reps or an extra set to whichever side is weaker our next drill is designed to strengthen the glutes. And this is a supine bridge or a lying bridge, but we're gonna use a medicine ball here. And the reason we're doing that is because we wanna get a little bit more activation out of those glutes. So what Nicole's gonna do is begin by putting her feet up on the medicine ball, but she's really gonna to try to get those feet onto the sides, the top sides of the ball. Now she's gonna separate the knees, so she's in a little bit of external rotation in the hips. And now from here, she's going to bridge upwards, keeping her core nice and tight, hold one 1,000, two 1,000, and then lower back down. What you should be getting here is a lot of activation through the glutes, the hamstrings as well, but keeping those knees apart and staying externally rotated is really gonna get those glutes working hard. That's why we're using the ball here and keeping the feet on the outside part of the ball. And this is the supine bridge with medicine ball. And you're gonna to wanna to do at least 10 to 12 repetitions here, making sure to hold for a second or two at the top of each rep. Our next drill is called a split squat. And here, we're really just focusing on the lower body because I want to point out some things with knee tracking. So Nicole's got her feet positioned shoulder width apart with one leg about two and a half to three feet in front of the other. The heel of the back foot is off the ground. Now what we're going to do on this one is slowly descend down, bending both knees, trying to get to a point where we're at a 90 degree angle, and then come back up. Now what we're doing here is we're working unilateral strength. That back leg is working, but it's really getting more of a stretch through the quad and the hip flexor. And we're focusing on keeping that front knee, look at the way that front knee lines up right over that ankle, and she's really driving heavy off that front heel. Excellent job there. Now let's get a little bit of a profile view of that as well so we can point out a couple of other things. As you can see, she sets up. Here you get a better sense of the foot position with the way the back heel is off the ground. And now she's going to really bend that right knee, the one closest to you. She goes straight down. Notice she keeps almost a 90 degree bend on that front leg. If she was really tight in that hip flexor and wasn't able to bend into that back leg, that left knee would really be shooting forward past the toe. So the core is engaged. We want to keep the abdominals drawn in tight. And she's driving straight down. And this is a good introduction to uh, more of a unilateral exercise for those of you that may be a little weak on one side. And that's the split squat. You're going to be, remember to want to do more sets or more repetitions for any leg that's weaker. Our final drill is called the sumo squat. Now for these, as you can see, Nicole has her feet positioned a little wider than shoulders width apart, with her feet turned out to 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. We're doing this because we want to build strength through the lower body, but we're also targeting the groin to build strength and increase flexibility in this area. Now for this one, Nicole is going to squat back by sitting into her hips, descending down, and then pressing back up. Notice the way she keeps the knees away from each other, making sure that they don't pinch inward here. So if you're tight through the groin, this is going to be a difficult one to do, so you may not be able to get down to the 90 degree position as well as she can. But you can see it takes a lot of flexibility in the groin. You want to go nice and slow, nice, easy descent. And then as you get stronger, you can always hold on to a medicine ball or a dumbbell for a little bit of added resistance. Pause at the bottom for a second and really make sure that you're firing out and those knees aren't coming towards each other and that's the sumo squat. Okay, so that essentially completes our series on physical assessments and corrective exercises. I hope you've learned a lot during this series about the way your body functions and different things that you can do to help correct any imbalances that you may have. And hopefully they're gonna to lead to some big improvements in the water. 
I'll see you next time right here on Ask the Drawline Coach.